थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर नाइस इंट्रोडक्शन सपना आई एम वेरी मच थैंकफुल टू डॉक्टर फ्राइडे सर फॉर गिविंग मी एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू शेयर माय व्यूज रिगार्डिंग हाउ टू बिकम मास्टर इन ऑर्गेनिक केमिस्ट्री इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू ऑल माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स इट्स अ ग्रेट डे फॉर मी आफ्टर लॉन्ग टाइम at amravati i am delivering the talk through this online mode and uh, today i am going to talk about how to become master in organic chemistry even though some of the students they may have gained their post graduation in chemistry last year 2020 uh, by your university okay then also but that degree is by paper whether we became really master in that particular subject the subject may be chemistry the subject may be botany the subject may be physics whatever it may be the subject even though your specialization may be different it may be organic chemistry in organic physical analytical industrial polymer chemistry then also whether we became master in uh, that chemistry or not accordingly the topic which i have decided over here mastering organic chemistry a challenge and how to become master in organic chemistry through problem solving approach these are the my two lectures are there and today we will cover whatever the part uh, we will discuss for today and again we will continue for tomorrow fortunately 100 students can occupy this uh, google meet and uh, so many uh, students are in waiting but uh, we can't do anything for that one also okay those who have joined early they can uh, take advantage of this particular lecture and uh, sorry for uh, some uh, uh, internet issue with me that's why i am not able to join quickly uh, okay just i will share my presentation yes whether i am audible and visible both my slides are visible yes sir yes sir yes sir yeah the first slide uh, you can see mastering organic chemistry a problem solving approach as uh, rightly mentioned by one of our student sapna uh, he uh, she has introduced me Uh, after completion of my post graduation from department of chemistry dr baba sahab ambedkar maratwada university in the year 1999 then i have prepared for net examination uh, and in the year of 2001 uh, qualified set and net under category of jrf and then i joined for phd program at india's premier institution that is national chemical laboratory pune and uh, after pursuing phd degree uh, uh, meantime i got an opportunity as a faculty position at department of chemistry the same department where i have learned my post graduation program and uh, uh, meantime uh, uh, i have uh, visited many places of india as well as abroad okay now our today's task is mastering organic chemistry a problem solving approach uh, and uh, just Uh, before talking on this particular uh, issue uh, i will give you one equation to you uh, that is r cube is equal to os r cube is equal to os see you will not see in any kind of equation in organic chemistry okay no doubt we have seen several reactions n number of reactions are there but the equation uh, available in physics or physical chemistry or mathematics that type of equations we never seen in organic chemistry some part of physical organic chemistry we have seen some equations like hamet equation uh, that type of equations we have seen observed but this equation uh, it this equation is not available at any place not only uh, internet resources as well as books because this equation was created by some of the person and so far it is not available at any place 
But we have to give justice to this particular equation R cube is equal to OS. What do you mean by this R cube? Three R are there and uh, is equal to OS. And we have to give justice to this particular equation. Before talking to this particular equation, just uh, I want to remind you regarding some of the things, uh, regarding some of the things as we know very well, we are studying aromatic aldehydes from 11th standard. Uh, or from 12th standard, definitely aldehydes and ketones is there uh, at 11th standard or 12th standard. And then again, we are continuing, continuing the study of aromatic aldehydes. This particular slide represents one aldehyde can be utilized for many more reactions, named reactions. Okay, one aldehyde. Take an example of benzaldehyde, anisaldehyde, chloraldehyde, toluenaldehyde, whatever it may be, the aldehyde. Aromatic aldehyde, it should be aromatic aldehyde. And see that a particular aromatic aldehyde can be used for many reactions. Just reaction, just I can discuss the reaction Perkin condensation reaction. As we know, Perkin condensation reaction of aromatic aldehyde with acetic anhydride in presence of sodium acetate, you will get uh, cinnamic acid. See, the, this particular reaction uh, requires aromatic aldehyde. Another reaction we know Stove condensation, Hans condensation, Hans dihydropyridine synthesis, then Darzen glycidic ester condensation reaction. Based on all the then Dakin, uh, Dakin reaction, Dakin West reaction, we know very well, uh, which leads to corresponding phenol after reaction with sodium hydroxide and hydrogen peroxide. Then Abramo reaction, Abramo reaction is nothing but a reaction of this aromatic aldehyde with the trialkyl phosphides. You will get hydroxyphosphonate, that reaction is Abramo reaction. Uh, similarly, this aromatic aldehyde is used in Henry reaction, that is nitroalveolar condensation reaction. Uh, as we know very well, nitroalveolar condensation reaction of aromatic aldehydes with nitromethane in presence of base, you will get nitroalveolar product. Similarly, the Manish reaction, Grignard reaction, as we are studying Grignard reagent from 11th standard, 12th standard, and separate topics are there. Reaction of any Grignard reagent with aldehydes, we will get corresponding alcohols. Okay, then Beckman rearrangement, you may have studied reaction of aromatic aldehyde with hydroxyl amine hydrochloride. It will form oxygen dairy to and followed by treatment with acid. Uh, you will get a cyanide rather than getting any amide because that is the drawback of uh, Beckman rearrangement because Beckman rearrangement is not possible on aldehydes. Okay, then Betis base, then novel condensation, then beginning condensation, aldo, laser switch, then benzoin, then tissue and hope. Uh, then Wittig reaction, Kanizaro's reaction, Wugi reaction, Passerni, Reformersky, etc. Just I have given over here some of the representative reactions where aromatic aldehyde can be used as one of the starting material. Means one molecule have many more applications. And uh, if the question may be asked to you in the university examination, write several reactions related to benzaldehyde then students are unable to give answer of that question just give the names of those reactions and if you have written 10 minimum names then you will get two marks then that type of question is a too much difficult because to remember those reactions and see from 11th standard to ms second year uh, no one has counted how many reactions we have studied from 11th standard to till date see minimum minimum 100 reactions, minimum I am seeing, minimum 100 reactions can be studied up to UG level, up to UG level and in PG you may have learned more than two to three hundred named reactions, two to three hundred named reactions as in, uh, don't know how many named reactions are there but uh, you should know about 1000 named reactions, related named reactions, okay. Definitely our topic is mastering organic chemistry a challenge and that challenge we can accept, expect the, the answer of that particular question and uh, that problem mastering uh, organic chemistry that can be solved through problem solving approach and before starting the lecture uh, I used to take, uh, I used to remember these great personalities of organic chemistry. They are the grandfather, grand uh, fathers of organic chemistry. As we have seen some of the photographs in our books, the first person, do you know the first person who is that first person? He is a great Nobel laureate. He is R.B. Woodward. You may have studied in UV. That is Woodward, Fisher, uh, Woodward's rule is there. 
uh, in UV spectroscopy or you, if you may have studied steroids. Uh, uh, steroids, the first steroid is a cholesterol, as everyone knows. That cholesterol was synthesized the first time by Robert B. Ward in the year of 1928, means around 100 years before he has discovered uh, the synthesis of cholesterol in 58 step synthesis. And see, along with it, they have deduced or they have determined the structure of cholesterol. Structure of cholesterol, see, there are 27 carbons are there in cholesterol. Four rings are there. Three rings are six member ring, one ring is a five member ring, and some side chain is there. And the number of methyl groups, there are five methyl groups were there, as well as one hydroxyl group, one double bond at five six position uh, of that particular steroid. And one another important thing is in cholesterol, there are eight chiral centers. And in the year of 1928, 100 years before around they have determined the structure of cholesterol. That time no NMR facility, no single crystal facility, then also they have determined means whatever chemistry they have done in the laboratory, just we are reading their chemistry. Just we are reading. Whatever chemistry would have done 100 years before, that chemistry just we are reading over here. And it's a difficult understanding of that chemistry in the 21st century of second or third decade okay that is the first person second person i used to call him he's a grandfather of organic chemistry he has given so many things to us he has synthesized more than 2000 natural products and many more indians have pursued their phd degree as well as a postdoc under his supervision he's a great nobel laureate and the first founder of the concept of retrosynthetic analysis he's a great Nobel laureate Elias James Corey E.J. Corey you may have seen his book uh, the logic of chemical synthesis first book written on the retrosynthetic analysis and the concept first and he was discovered in the year of 1990-91 and in the year of 1995 he has published the, the first book of the concept retrosynthetic analysis. Again, one more thing I want to tell you. So many reactions uh, discovered by E.J. Kore, as well as uh, so many reagents. For example, the, you may have studied the battery diethyl ampolon chemistry. That ampolon chemistry was discovered by E.J. Kore. E.J. Kore, ampolon chemistry, 2 dithio battery diethyl that, uh, that ampolon chemistry. Or you may have studied Kore Winter reaction, Kore Tchaikovsky reaction, so many reactions are there. Kore Foods reaction, more than 100 new reactions on his name. And more than 100 new reagents he has discovered and more than 1000 new molecules that time in the year of 1970s to 1995. Or till date he's working in the laboratory at the age of 97 or 98. Then the next person just for the sake of the students' interest, and they should know about the grandfathers of our organic chemistry. That's why I am showing them. See, the third person is a great Nobel laureate again uh, for his contribution in oxidation chemistry. He has received a Nobel Prize. He's nothing but a Professor K.V. Sharpless, and we are studying his chemistry, Sharpless asymmetric hypoxidation, Sharpless asymmetric dihydroxylation, amino hydroxylation, that type of chemistry we are studying so far, uh, and credit goes to him. Then next person, he has discovered carbon-carbon double bond formation reaction, that is olefination reaction, olefination reaction, that is alkene formation reaction, we have seen, he is nothing but a great Nobel laureate, that is George Wittig. He is a George Wittig, Conversion of carbon is to alkenes by means of phosphorus elides. He has discovered and he has received a Nobel Prize. Then the next person for his great contribution to carbocation chemistry. Carbocation chemistry is nothing but George Evola. And uh, uh, last year, just two years before, he has passed away at the age of 102, 3 something. Uh, for his great contribution to carbocation chemistry, he has received a Nobel Prize. The next person. Uh, everyone uh, is studying his chemistry, that is a Grignard reagent, and he is the person who has received a Nobel Prize. And he has studied the reactivity of that RMGX, how that R minus can react with several types of electrophiles, several types of electron deficient centers. Uh, we have studied reaction of Grignard reagent with uh, carbonis, particularly aldehydes, ketones, esters, cyanides, 
okay then react with water alcohols etc so many sub several substrates are there and that given the reagent can be used for the preparation of several other organometallic reagents like organo copper organo zinc organo lithium such type of reagents can be prepared from that organo uh, magnesium reagent these uh, victor grignard okay then uh, some recent uh, discoveries uh, made by uh, one of the great scientists and nobel laureate unfortunately he has visited several times to india uh, in the year of 2007 first time he has visited india and uh, fortunately uh, i could able to listen his talk at the national chemical laboratory in some international conference uh, he's uh, uh, robert grabs he is a grubs and uh, in our curriculum grubs metathesis is there grubs olefin metathesis is there for the year 2006 he has received a nobel prize then these three people as we are studying coupling reactions coupling reactions that is suzuki hex sonagashi rastile ulman that type of coupling reactions we are studying means carbon carbon bond combination reactions the first person is a suzuki second one is hex and the third one is a negashi Suzuki, Hick, and Negashi, they have discovered some reactions uh, uh, of coupling reaction, coupling reaction, carbon carbon bond formation reaction. Okay, the next person is a B.M. Prost. He is a great uh, natural product chemist as well as uh, some organometallic uh, chemistry. He has done a lot of work and in future he may receive the top uh, prize of organic chemistry definitely then next person you may have seen his photograph in some of the cover pages of book even though we are referring some of the books but we are not able to understand who is that person he is nothing but a great teacher great researcher francis a carry and you may are referring the book of organic chemistry by f a carry or another book uh, organic chemistry part a part b by francis a carry those books written by uh, this great teacher francis a carry then this person uh, he has changed the scenario of total synthesis of some natural products uh, he has written several books as well as he has discovered several natural products he is nothing but kc nikolao and uh, whatever retrosynthetic concept he has modified that retro concept uh, retrosynthetic analysis concept as well as he has written the books on uh, classics in total synthesis three books he has written and we are referring those three books for post graduation program as well as he has written one of the great book of organic chemistry molecules that changed the world molecules that changed the world how those molecules were discovered and how those molecules had changed the scenario of chemistry or uh, the peoples then the last person belongs to india well, even though uh, his uh, nobel laureate for us but he has not received any kind of that kind of a prize but uh, he is a real organic chemist and he has, he has done a lot of work in natural product chemistry is nothing but uh, gordon meta uh, actually has worked a lot in india's premier institution indian institute of science bangalore then he has moved to uh, hyderabad and again further moved as to bangalore and presently he is working uh, as a jc ghost national fellow okay after remembering these great personalities of organic chemistry then uh, as our task is how to become master in organic chemistry how to become master in organic chemistry okay the first task i want to give you uh, i want to tell you this is my personal opinion reading of quality books and the purpose of showing this particular slide along with uh, some uh, photographs of the books that is important uh, reading of quality books written by the quality teachers as well this is a one of the criteria for becoming master in organic chemistry reading of quality books i don't know what kind of books you are referring for your post graduation program because after a year or after 6 months you will become master in organic chemistry then what kind of books you are referred for becoming master in organic chemistry uh yeah you should read a quality books these are the reference books these are the reference books see the first book just i am showing over here it looks like a textbook and uh, this book was prepared actually for the students of undergraduate in you uh, uh, in america but in india this this book is used by the uh, pg students as well as the researchers uh, this book is written by cladan greaves then warren wothers organic chemistry and if you want to crack competitive examination like net set and gate you must have a copy of this book with you 
and you should read at least once this book then only you can understand organic chemistry and then then this will be the one of the step in becoming organic uh, becoming master in organic chemistry then uh, everyone talks about the advanced organic chemistry by jerry march no doubt it's a uh, difficult to understand this particular book but if you read many times many times you will understand that particular book and whatever mechanism part is there you can learn that mechanism part from this jerry march books then uh, everyone may have referring these two books written by uh, just now i told you that francis a carry advanced organic chemistry part a and part b you should have a copy of these two books uh, because if you want to crack competitive examinations you should solve many more problems from such kind of books okay then uh, then uh, this next book is written by uh, mp smith marx advanced organic chemistry some modifications in this book as well as the most important book uh, no doubt it's a uh, difficult to understand the language of this particular book written by peter sykes very small book but it gives us so many things to us now these are the some general books just i have given some idea if you want to crack net examination you should have a library of books I, i can say library of book because as we are using the android mobile phone of rupees 10000 rupees minimum then we should have a copy of such type of books at least we should have a xerox copy of these books okay now i want to show you some of the books some of the most important books uh, in becoming master in organic chemistry those who want to become a real learner of organic chemistry they should have a, these kinds of books in their own library see now here the book of uh, organic synthesis third edition this is second edition uh, written by michael b smith m b smith which book i do consider this book is books organic chemistry then name reactions by g jackley uh, so many around 3 to 400 name reactions are covered in those two books as well as again g jackley have wrote uh, some another book beautiful book name reactions based on heterocyclic chemistry means name reactions for heterocyclic chemistry because so many name reactions are related to construction of heterocyclic compounds that's why that's why these two volumes are their name reactions for heterocyclic chemistry one as well as heterocyclic chemistry two okay if you are not getting such kind of books then then you should have at least soft copy of these kinds of books and the next one is name reactions functional group interconvergence c just i want to tell you today uh, organic chemistry is nothing but functional group interconvergence organic chemistry is, is nothing but interconvergence of functional group with the help of some reagents and if you have a library of reagents then you will become master in organic chemistry okay and to learn those reagents some of the books may help you while uh, doing the functional group transformation by using specific reagents okay and then a recently published this one of the book based on strategic applications of named reactions in organic synthesis by kurti and the cost of this book is around 2500 right many more reactions with detailed description of each and every reaction is given over there and uh, this book may help in studying various kinds of named reactions see then uh, to understand the retrosynthetic concept one has to learn organic synthesis the disconnection approach by uh, stuart warren as we are studying for the fourth semester and our university have a separate paper on retrosynthetic analysis or retrosynthesis organic synthesis by retrosynthetic approach and you should read after understanding all this organic chemistry after understanding cladder after understanding peter sykes after understanding francis a carry then only you can read such type of retrosynthetic analysis books organic synthesis is the disconnection approach and organic synthesis strategy and control again it, it was written by paul white and stuart warren stuart warren just passed away just 6 months before okay he is a good teacher excellent teacher have wrote many more books of organic chemistry then whatever i have told uh, some uh, regarding ej kore this this is the book the logic of chemical synthesis is written by ej kore you should read such type of books and while reading this these books you will learn many more reagents how total synthesis of natural products people have carried out with the help of several reagents and the finally uh, finally uh, 
you may have seen those who have uh, studied from the universities of different universities of Maharashtra or other part of uh, country or some of the institutions they may have these volumes of 22 books 22 books reagents for organic synthesis by Fisher and Fisher uh, reagents for organic synthesis whatever reagents we are studying those reagents you will get in a single uh, series of books and those series of 22 volumes are there and the cost of those 22 volumes is around 60,000 rupees around I'm saying 60,000 the cost may be have increased nowadays okay see the first point which is important point which I have discuss, discussed over, over to you regarding mastering organic chemistry the first point is you have to read quality books but reading the quality books is not sufficient in becoming master in organic chemistry. The second point, just we will discuss over here. Uh, this uh, uh, slide indicates that the students or the participants, they are not listening the lecture like uh, just like this lecture. This, this is a virtual, our lecture is a virtual lecture, but uh, uh, if uh, offline lecture is there, the situation may be like this way. Uh, these people, they are listening the lectures delivered by the experts in that particular subject. Means, second and most important point, you have to listen the lectures delivered by the experts in the particular subject. Experts, nowadays so many YouTube videos are available, uh, made by the great teachers of chemistry. Just I want to give you one example. Some of the uh, participants may belong to teacher community as well. They may have heard about the professor, respected professor M.S. Madhya sir. Uh, he has uh, made several uh, videos and uh, videos in YouTube. Uh, videos of uh, pericyclic reactions, then photochemistry, then spectroscopy, then stereochemistry. Because Professor M. S. Madias is an excellent teacher of organic chemistry, excellent teacher, and uh, he has completed more than 50 years, two years before of his teaching career. See, of his teaching career, he is teaching organic chemistry since 50 years before. 50 years before means till date he is continuing his teaching profession as well as a passion. Okay, that's why second point is you have to listen, listen the lectures delivered by the quality teachers. Okay, uh, two points, one is reading books, second one is listening of the lectures delivered by the experts, uh, experts like uh, MS Vadias. Okay, then after reading and listening of the lectures delivered by the great personalities of that particular subject or experts in that particular subject, you have to have preparation of some notes preparing notes because you have to prepare yourself the notes nowadays what happens somebody is preparing preparing the notes and just we are making xerox copy of that one that is not a sufficient in becoming master in organic chemistry because books are always there whatever subject you understand accordingly you have to write in your notebook write in your notebook make a notes and uh, you can read several times then only you can understand that particular subject. Miss preparation of notes uh, by yourself, not by others. Nowadays, if in classroom 100 students are there, one student is preparing the notes and uh, just uh, other people are making the Xerox copy because money is not a matter nowadays. Money is not a matter nowadays. If for Xerox 100 rupees required, just we are giving 100 rupees and just we are taking the Xerox. And after taking the Xerox, then just reading once when the exam is there. Yeah, see, even though I want to tell you, everyone is preparing for the examination, postgraduate examination. Everyone is not preparing for understanding of the subject. That is my uh, one of the approach which I have observed in the last some of the years. Now, third point, preparing the notes. Okay, preparing the notes that is also important. Am I audible properly? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Just, just I have checked. Okay, then three points which we have seen. And fourth one, fourth is also important as uh, we are the learners of organic chemistry, we have to do n number of experiments in the laboratory. 
the number of experts we are doing from 11th standard to till date from 11th standard just what we have done in 11th standard just we have determined the normality of given solution or how to handle burette pipette like that way and then from 12th standard or bsc we have done uh, separation of binary mixture or uh, analysis of given organic component or preparation of some uh, compounds by one step or two step just we have a see okay our teacher is providing procedure to us and accordingly we are doing the experiments am i right just accordingly we are doing the experiment but why i am adding this particular reagent that i don't know that i don't know just uh, taking some compound adding some reagent then solvent and just we are replacing that reaction mixture for one hour after one hour our sir is saying that you have to check the tlc if tlc is there just pour out crushed ice if solid comes out then filter it dry it crystallize it and take the melting point and compare uh, that melting point with the standard molecule okay that type of things we are doing and later on we are calculating the yield of that particular reaction if the transformation is a single step transformation then the yield the if the transformation is a multi step transformation then we have to calculate the yield for each and every step and finally we have to calculate the yield overall yield of that particular compound see for example if you want to carry out sulfonamide synthesis sulfonylamide in first step which we are taking acetaldehyde acetaldehyde on chlorosulfonation which gives paracetamolobenzene sulfonyl chloride that is the first step in second step that paracetamolobenzene sulfonyl chloride on reaction with ammonia we are getting paracetamolobenzene sulfonamide this is the second step and the third step hydrolysis of that amide group by means of acid or base we will have a sulfonyl amide this is the three third step and in these three steps you have to calculate the yield of that reaction for every step for uh, sul chlorosulfonation for uh, sulfonyl amide formation paracetamolobenzene sulfonamide and finally sulfonyl amide hydrolysis step see we we are calculating accordingly but why i am performing this particular experiment why i am adding some, some reagent even though Uh, while doing the titration uh, or while doing the determination of normality or molarity we are adding some uh, reagent like phenolphthalein indicator why i am adding phenolphthalein why i am adding methyl orange indicator okay uh, several types of uh, indicators are there why i am adding this type of acid catalyst that chemistry we are not studying as sir has told sir has given the procedure take 2 gram of compound So and so, add ten ml of solvent, add this reagent as per the calculations, and uh, st stir for two hours. Take the TLC, check the TLC. If the reaction completes, then pour out crushed ice, crystallize it, and take the melting point like that way. But this practice can be done by any kind of lab assistant. We are studying only till standard. He can do. He can do. That's why. That's why. that's why my suggestion is that you have to do experiments with some logic why i am performing this kind of experiments see that time the four points just i want to discuss one second first point reading of quality books second point is listening of the lectures delivered by the experts third one is the preparation of notes by ourselves not by others and fourth one you have to do experiments with the care with understanding proper understanding of that reaction conditions and each and everything these four points just i want to uh, highlight over here now again some of the tips i want to give you in becoming mastering in organic chemistry mastering in organic chemistry because organic chemistry is a long movie it's a long movie in one day we cannot become master in organic chemistry or in a month or in a year one cannot become a master in organic chemistry it requires some certain steps that's why you have to follow some certain rules and regulations even though we are studying this organic chemistry from 11th standard we are unable to give answer of four organic bases four organic acids four organic reagents like that way of 10 named reactions five named reactions okay we are unable to give answer of this type of questions that's why that's why how to determine Uh, the structure of primary secondary and tertiary alcohols by means of nmr spectroscopy how to determine primary secondary and tertiary alcohols by means of ir spectroscopy uh, how to determine this primary secondary and tertiary alcohols by chemical methods see 
even though we are doing n number of experiments but there also we are unable to give answer of such type of questions that's why that's why organic chemistry is a long movie and to see the second point just a minute i just i will take a water Yeah, as I told you that organic chemistry is a long movie, and every character has some side story. Every character has some side story, and if you jump in between, you will feel lost. If suppose you have studied organic chemistry in first semester very well, and if you have missed it in second semester, then you are unable to understand that organic chemistry in the third semester. that's why continuation is important continuation is important even though if you are not prepared organic chemistry at 11th or 12th standard then it will become a difficult in learning or understanding organic chemistry in bsc first year as well similarly for post graduation as well if you have missed the topic alcohols then you will not understand carbonyls because most of the things are inter related because organic chemistry is a dependent chemistry organic chemistry is a dependent chemistry it depends on other parts of uh, like uh, alcohols like alkenes alkynes because they are interconvertible that's why that's why you should know the fundamentals of organic chemistry and if but if you follow the plot from the start if you have started proper preparation from first year msc first year you will know if suppose you have missed the chance of proper understanding of organic chemistry in bsc and if suppose you may not uh, have a quality books in bsc then why not to have a start from this particular moment if you follow some certain plot from the start it all makes sense you will understand organic chemistry very well organic chemistry is not a volatile chemistry just i want to quote over here organic chemistry is not a volatile chemistry preparation of organic chemistry is volatile that's why it becomes volatile if we have read organic chemistry like a volatile like a volatile then your subject will be volatile that's why your preparation should be solid then then that chemistry will not be volatile that's why that's why preparation is volatile that's why it becomes volatile organic chemistry okay many teachers are saying that organic chemistry is a volatile chemistry but the chemistry is not a volatile the solvents are volatile the reagents are volatile that's why that's why keep in mind if you have prepared very well you will not forget forever okay this is the first point which i want to discuss over here then second and most important point learn about the structures learn about the structures see if i have given some name of the compound and accordingly you have to draw the structure with the help of that particular name and you have to follow some certain rules and regulations of given by the iupac if some iupac name is given accordingly you have to draw the structure and if small structure is given accordingly you have to draw the name of that particular compound okay and if suppose i have given some molecular formula to you accordingly you you should draw the you should draw the structure of that particular compound with the help of some molecular formula but while determining the structure of that particular compound you should know how to identify number of bonds how to identify number of bonds c over here that is also important even though if suppose i have given to you c6h12 the molecular formula c6h12 accordingly you have to draw the structure how many possible structures are uh, there yes there are many more possible structures are there see one one of the structure is cyclohexane cyclohexane for the molecular formula c6h12 that is one of the structure cyclohexane you you may have another uh, cyclic uh, uh, sorry another structure may be there what could be the another structure just you can write ch3 ch one double bond may be there ch3 ch double bond ch ch2 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 ch3 like that way Uh, it may be symmetrical or it may be asymmetrical that double bond may be at carbon number 1 or 2 or 3 like that way is accordingly you have to draw the structure that's why you should know the number of bonds the bonds may be single bond the bonds may be double bond the bonds may be triple bond okay that's why that's why you should know about the structures 
you should have an idea about drawing of structures from given name. Okay, then next important point re related to structure. Uh, in earlier days, we used to write CS3, CS2, 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 CS3 like that way. But nowadays, some borderline diagrams we have to draw. We have to draw like that way because we have to reduce the space as well as we can reduce the time as well. Means we can save many more time, uh, time as well. And if you are able to draw the structure of any organic compound, any organic compound, it may be phenol, it may be aldehyde, it may be ketone, it may be alcohol, acid, ester, anhydride, amide, amides, nitrox, I know, whatever it may be. Uh, if you have a structure, then you should know about the reactivity of compounds. Reactivity of compounds. If suppose small question I have given to you, uh, can you write a short note on sulfuric acid? Sulfuric acid and minimum 10 points are required, then only you will get two marks. Two marks. Write short notes on sulfuric acid. Uh, just like an instant test. Uh, instant test. Just I have given. Then what do you see? Uh, what do you write over there for sulfuric acid? Only molecular formula people will write H2SO4. Then also students are unable to have the structure of H2SO4. How many sulfur are there? How many oxygen? How many hydrogen? That we know very well. But what will be the sulfur? What is the oxidation state of sulfur? What is the basicity of that sulfuric acid in sul uh, uh, basicity? Uh, Basicity of sulfuric acid over there, how it can donate the proton, that is also important. In which reaction sulfuric acid is used, that is also important. Accordingly, you have to draw the types of sulfuric acid, how sulfuric acid is prepared. Okay, like that way, one should know about the reactivity of compound. Not only inorganic, but organic. Alcohol, if primary alcohol is there, then you should know the reactivity of primary, secondary, tertiary, primary. On oxidation, it gives, you will have aldehyde. Uh, and secondary on oxidation it will give ketone alcohols on dehydration you will get olefins like that way alcohols on substitution substitution uh, like SNI type of substitution reaction you will get corresponding alkyl halides this uh, you will get alkyl chlorides or alkyl bromides or alkyl iodides like that way means you should know the reactivity of that particular compounds that's why I have given learn about this structure then uh, next point in becoming master in organic chemistry build a strong foundation uh, build a strong foundation because organic chemistry is like a pyramid organic chemistry is like a pyramid the top will collapse without a strong base if your base is a weak then uh, further study is not a suitable or not useful uh, for becoming master in organic chemistry that's why your base should be strong that's why I have given here, the top will collapse without a strong base. While construction of some building of 100 phases uh, or uh, 100 floors, your base should be strong. Then only top will remain as it is. Otherwise, the whole building will collapse someday. That's why your base should be strong. Now here, I have given over here, even if you think you have no time, even if you think you have no time, go back to introduction and early chapters and spend some time if you are not prepared very well at undergraduate level organic chemistry or at first semester second semester third semester then you go back to learn the basics of that particular subject you have to read the books of ncrt of 11th standard or 12th standard or you should read the book uh, which you have used for bsc first year Reference book that is also important or uh, textbook like uh, written by Bhalad Bhar, Organic Chemistry by Bhalad Bhar or another book of Organic Chemistry by Solomon. They are good books for understanding Organic Chemistry at undergraduate level. But at undergraduate level, you should have the book of Clayton. You should have the book of Morrison Boyd and accordingly you can prepare. That's why if you are not, you are not ready, sir. Many students, they are saying that my basic is very much weak, sir. What I have to do? Just go back, read the basic topics from any kinds of books. Then only you will understand further organic chemistry. Further organic chemistry. That's why you have to go back again. Then <clears throat> you will likely be surprised how much better you will grasp the hard material once you completely understand the EG material. It means that first of all, you have to understand the simple simple things simple simple concepts of organic chemistry and then only you can try for understanding the so-called hard 
organic chemistry like that way. That's why usually natural powder synthesis will kept at post graduation level for MS in second year. That's why they have not kept at BSc first year or second year. Small small molecules, how those small small molecules can be synthesized. That's why first of all small small reagents. Uh, we have to learn small small reaction that is aldo canizaros clade and uh, sorry uh, canizaros reaction then uh, you may have studied uh, pleasant switch reaction pleasant eastern condition manage michael addition these reactions are simple simple reaction and once you understand these simple reactions then only you can understand some tough so called tough material of that particular organic chemistry see just i want to quote over here some one of the equation as I have given in very first slide, my first equation is R cube is equal to OS and now here I want to give you some of the other equations, some of the other equations and in that equation all are capital OC is equal to DC, OC, all are capital OC is equal to DC, another equation OC is equal to TC and third one is OC is equal to PC, OC is equal to DC, OC is equal to TC and OC is equal to TC, three DC, OC, and PC. See, meantime, you can think OC is equal to TC, DC, and PC. Okay, I will give you answer of this question later on. Now, prepare mind maps. Prepare mind maps if you have prepared very well uh, organic chemistry. And while studying organic chemistry, as we are studying so many reagents, so many reagents, and uh, while studying that reagents, what are the properties of that reagents, where these reagents are used, and many more reagents are available, just you should know about their oxidizing properties or reducing properties or dehydrating properties or the reactivity of the reagent. How to find out the reactivity of the reagent? If you know the structure of that reagent, then you can find out the re reactivity. Whether that reagent is acidic or whether that reagent is a basic, accordingly you, we can determine the reactivity of that particular reagent. The reagent may be organic or it may be inorganic. Okay, and make a list and remember that because you should have a list of reagents, list of reagents and accordingly you can think what kind of uh, reagents their utility is there. Like in our mobile, we have a several contacts of 1000. Accordingly, you can make, make a list of reagents and what are the applications of these reagents in short. That's why my suggestion is that make a chart of specific class of compounds. Make a chart of specific class of compounds. If you have taken alcohols, then primary, secondary, tertiary. How primary alcohols are prepared? How secondary are prepared? How tertiary are prepared? Then what could be the uh, chemical properties, uh, sorry, physical properties of primary, secondary and tertiary? Then accordingly, what are the chemical properties of primary, secondary and tertiary? How to confirm the formation of primary alcohol, secondary alcohol, tertiary alcohol, by means of spectroscopy, like that way. Like that way, you have to make a chart. What could be the IR frequency for primary, secondary and tertiary? Uh, what could be the NMR pattern for primary, secondary and tertiary? Carbons, uh, protons, those protons. Well, what could be the carbon pattern through carbon 13 NMR? Like that way, you have to think. Then, most important thing is to do by yourself. Uh, that is important. You have to do yourself. No one will do for yours, uh, yourself. Okay, that's why. That's why. As we are taking food for ourselves, like that way, you have to prepare the organic chemistry by yourself. That is my personal suggestion to all of you. Okay, now just we are switching towards some other aspects of uh, chemistry. Don't forget acid base reaction. Don't forget acid base reaction. Okay, if you are studied in the 11th standard or 12th standard, acid base reactions, some topic may be there acid base reactions. Okay, see, as I told you, that organic chemistry is a dependent chemistry. Organic chemistry is a dependent chemistry. DC, one of the full form for. DC is a dependent chemistry. OC, organic chemistry. OC is equal to organic chemistry. OC is equal to dependent chemistry. If you have prepared very well 11 standard, then only you can understand 12 standard. If you have prepared 11 by 12, then you will be able to understand first year program. That's why, that's why you should know about the fundamentals of organic chemistry. Okay. Now, more than half of organic chemistry is based around acid base reactions. Half of organic chemistry, see, take an example of any kinds of named reactions, any kinds of named reactions or rearrangements or reagents, see, just reactions, 
carbon and base reactions are the under condensation carry on the under condensation then michael addition then marriage reaction we have seen reformed reaction all are carbon and base reactions and reaction of this carbon with this carbon is nothing but base now it acts as base and it will attack on electrophile some kind of electrophile that electrophile is nothing but sometimes acids okay or sometimes that base may act as a nucleophile or that base may act as a base that's why that's why half of organic chemistry is based on acid base reactions and most important thing one should know about the electrophile and nucleophile even though after completion of post graduation students are unable to give the definition exact definition of electrophile and nucleophile or the question may be asked in the pg level examination can you have list of 10 electrophiles can you have a list of 10 nucleophiles different types of nucleophiles then students are unable to give answer of system of logical questions even though they are studying from 11th standard okay then next important point the levis concept of acid bases levis acid base concept we should know the list of levis acids list of levis bases that is also an important thing not only levis acids and bases but also you should know brown state you should know brown state uh, acids and bases then you should know arrhenius acids and bases that's why that's why these reactions even though we have studied this particular topic in the 11th or 12th standard ionic equilibria or uh, 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 yeah ionic equilibria that topic one should know then now we will discuss some another point focus on understanding not on memorization focus on understanding not on memorization see this point is too much important in organic chemistry uh, why organic chemistry is volatile? It becomes volatile because you people are memorizing organic chemistry. Okay. And without understanding, just you are memorizing. That's why that organic chemistry becomes volatile. Okay. Memorization is overall poor strategy. Uh, memorization is overall poor strategy. How many things you will memorize? Because in alkanes, one n number of compounds are there. In alkanes, n number of compounds are there. In aromatic system, even though if you take the example of aromatic carboxylic acid, you may have n number of aromatic carboxylic acids are there. And how will you memorize those things? That's why, that's why memorization is over a poor strategy that is resorted when the people haven't planned ahead sufficiently and how to cram the night before exam. Those who are doing memorization in Marathi, we can call it patantar. Patantar. Many more people are doing patantar of organic chemistry. Even though teachers, I have seen, uh, even though teachers are doing the patantar of organic chemistry and how they are discussing in front of the students. Okay, that is a difficult task. That is a difficult ta task. Don't memorize. Just first of all, you have to understand. And if you, you, uh, you are having habit of memorization, then one day you will fail, get failed in front of the students as well as in the examinations. Okay, if you are prepared, suppose 50 named reactions by memorization, by memorization, and in examination, if you are asked some intermediate of some of the reaction, then you are unable to give answer of that particular question. That's why understand organic chemistry very well first. Understanding how to understand that we will discuss later on. How to understand? Okay, uh, then. For certain courses requires memorization, no doubt, for certain courses, because normal gadget terms, rules and regulations, we have to memorize. Then names of the reagents, because n number of reagents are there, you have to remember those reagents, that is also important thing. And functional groups, even though I am asking small questions to our students, when they have entered for first year program, just may have, may I have a list of various functional groups, just you write in your notebook at least 10 functional groups then also students are unable to write minimum 10 functional groups in the notebook even though we are studying organic chemistry from the third standard okay do you understand this one focus on understanding not on memorization now see if you want to become a master in organic chemistry as i have already told you that some of the points uh, reading, listening, uh, then preparing notes, as well as uh, being experts in the laboratory, and after having these all these aspects of uh, aspects in become master in organic chemistry. If you want to become master, you should have some study partner or whatever chemistry you have learned, whatever chemistry you have prepared, just you have to discuss with your friend. 
just you have to discuss with friend discussion chemistry is important that's why organic chemistry is a discussion chemistry huh? organic chemistry is a dependent chemistry oc is equal to dc just i am uh, talking about the meaning of dc a discussion chemistry the uh, dependent chemistry the only chemistry okay see you will be surprised at what you learn when you have to explain something to others okay if you are prepared very well with understanding with understanding then it will become easy to discuss with other people with other people and if you discuss with that other people then one day it will come you will not need any kind of books in front of you just accordingly you can discuss that chemistry in front of the audience don't ever feel like you need to tackle organic chemistry by yourself uh, don't consider by yourself yes i will prepare myself uh, and i will become master in organic chemistry without discussing with others it's not possible i have observed that uh, several students several students uh, of our post graduation program they are preparing organic chemistry by themselves alone in their room but very next day they have failed to give answer of some of the questions that's why if you are prepared alone no doubt later on you have to discuss that chemistry with your friends that is my suggestion suggestion to all of you while becoming master of organic chemistry and the next point getting together getting together to do work getting together to do work with your colleagues is a fantastic idea getting together to do work with your colleagues is a fantastic idea that's why that's why that's why there is one quotation given by the great philosopher henry ford henry ford somewhere coming together is a beginning see coming together is a beginning keeping together is a progress and working together is a success and uh, keep in mind this particular mantra of working together is a success that's why while preparing organic chemistry if you want to crack any kind of examination it may be university examination it may be competitive examination like net set and gate or any other examination paint as well then come together discuss together and uh, you can learn organic chemistry with yourself now yeah after understanding the uh, that chemistry organic chemistry learning organic chemistry requires problem practice learning organic chemistry requires problem practice and nowadays no one is doing solving of such type of problems even though the book of organic chemistry written by morrison boyd at the end of each and every chapter each and every chapter they have given some exercise to us but no one is doing that particular exercise and if you want to crack such type of competitive examination just start from this particular moment to solving such type of problems that's why learning organic chemistry requires problem solve problem practice and see you should attempt questions you should attempt questions from reference books reference books and hit the past question papers you should attempt questions from the reference books then what could be the reference books are there okay what are books you are referring for post graduation whether you are using reference books or text books that is also important if you are using the reference books then whatever questions at given at the end of each chapter solve those questions huh? some of the questions may be difficult you can discuss with your teacher you can discuss with your friend and you will definitely will get the solution for this particular question okay uh, and as well as meantime you have to solve the past question papers then only uh, and spend all the extra time spend all the extra time you save from theory for organic chemistry into solving problems that's why once you understand the concept in the classroom once you understand the concept in the classroom just go at your place at your home or at your room they start solving the problems based around that particular concept even though if suppose you have studied ischer boler taraway fragmentation that name reaction if suppose you have studied in the classroom just go at your place at your home start solving the problems related to that particular ischer boler taraway fragmentation name reaction that's why so work with the problems work with the problems and work with the problems this is my suggestion to all of you that's why In addition to four important points: reading quality books, listening the lectures delivered by the experts, preparation of notes.
by yourself and uh, doing experiments in the laboratory then most important point is after understanding any topic of organic chemistry you have to solve the number of problems related problems that's why problem solving is important in becoming master in organic chemistry definitely you all people will agree with my this particular comments in becoming master in organic chemistry okay see uh, you may have observed such type of picture anywhere at your place maybe or the person may uh, maybe on the cycle or bicycle uh, this person is doing sharpening of knives sharpening of knives see at rural places also in marathi we can call it uh, dhar lavni at our side i don't know at your side chakula dhar lavayachi ka manat to ekada manus cycle varti firat asto and what he do what what he is doing over there just he is sharpening the knives sharpening the knives with the help of grindstone means grindstone sharpens knives see grindstone sharpens knives grindstone sharpens knives problem solving sharpens minds if 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 you have solved a number of problems related to any topic like aldehydes ketones uh, alcohols acids esters then amines amides or spectroscopy problems like ir up nmr c13 mass 2d coz z head core or combined spectroscopy problems if you have solved many more problems and like one one lakh problems on spectroscopy then definitely definitely you can solve any kind of problems within a minute within a fraction of seconds you can solve those problems okay means grindstones the grindstone sharpens knives problem solving sharpens minds okay uh, as i think you may know this person because uh, i have given an equation uh, over here he is a great great scientist a great philosopher einstein einstein he has given one equation to us e is equal to mc square uh, what we are doing right now if the two values are given over there if values for m and c then accordingly we are calculating e or if you want to calculate the c if values for e and m is given then accordingly with the help of calculator we are calculating the values okay the job has become very much easier nowadays with the help of calculator in earlier days we have to use if the some calculations are in point then we have to use log tables but uh, due to calculator and now mobile calculator we are not purchasing 50 rupees calculator but we are using 10000 rupees mobile for doing calculation and we, we are using in chemical laboratory also okay but my question is that how this equation has came have you thought about uh, how that equation has came this equation has not came in a one day or in one night after doing several experiments and having some proofs for those experiments einstein came to know that this equation with the help of this equation one can able to find out the values for either e for m or c some constant may be there similarly uh, as we are learners of chemistry Uh, we know arrhenius equation is uh, k is equal to a e raised to minus e a upon r t and if the values are given then accordingly we can calculate this k okay not only this one equation but planck's relation we know very well e is equal to h nu if uh, h and nu is given then we can calculate energy and if uh, planck's constant and the speed of light is given and uh, energy is given then accordingly we can calculate the moment or or vice versa as well but my question is that how these equations has came that is most important question mark and in physical chemistry in physics in mathematics in uh, computer science in electronics there may be such type of equations are there but in organic chemistry there is no any kind of equation only for habit but that habit we used to consider that is the part of physical organic chemistry physical organic chemistry okay uh, do you know about this person can anyone give answer of this particular person's photograph can anyone is able to give answer who is this person master 
Yes, uh, Mashirkar. He is uh, uh, Padma Vibhushan, former Director General, uh, Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, New Delhi, as well as uh, uh, CSIR is one of the premier institution, that is National Chemical Laboratory, former Director, Polymer Kerr to Patent Kerr. As we know, how he has uh, given fight for getting the patent of Haldi. Everyone knows. Uh, yes, for against the American patent of Haldi. He is a great person, great artist, chemical engineer, and uh, some long back, some five to six years before, there was one Marathi scientist and then held at Pune. And uh, Dr. Sudhir Gatmir is uh, taking his interview in Marathi. That interview was in Marathi. And I think that uh, Marathi Scientist Seminar was held at uh, uh, D.Y. Patil College. D.Y. Patil College uh, uh, or D.Y. Patil University. Uh, and in that interview, that interview was in Marathi and Dr. Sudhir Gatmir was taking his interview. And uh, so many questions he has raised and the same interview was telecast on the one of the channel uh, at around 8.30 or 8 p.m. in the evening, late evening. And uh, there was a, uh, one question, because that interview was in Marathi, and the one question he has asked, now everyone can understand Marathi very well. Sudhir Garbhani, Mahasakar Sarana, a question which I like is, Sir, Apla Shikshana Badal Sir, Mat Kaha. This was the question asked by this Sudhir Dargir. And uh, while giving answer of that particular question, Mahashankar sir has given one of the equation. One of the equation. Dr. Sudhir Dargir, uh, E is equal to F. E is equal to F. Usually we, the science peoples, usually we, the science peoples, thinks about E, the people from chemistry or people from physics, they used to think about E stands for energy. E stands for energy and F stands for force. Okay, F stands for force because we are uh, we have studied chemistry as well as the physics. That's why we are giving answer like E is equal to F. But see, keep in mind that interview was in Marathi and the questions were asked around Shikshan and the word the Shikshan word is related to E is equal to F. Means here, if you have taken proper education, if you have taken proper education, your future will be bright. Uh, if you have taken proper education, your future will be bright. And this equation you will not see in any place. Any place, anywhere. But after listening that lecture, one of the person uh, has taken the advantage of that particular equation and uh, discussing that particular equation for many times, more than 70 to 80 times. And even though Dr. Masekar sir don't know whether his equation is discussing with the students of Maharashtra as well as India. Okay. And after listening that particular equation, the person is thinking about uh, why not we have a, one equation for our subject as well. One equation, similar type of equation. Well, equation and that equation again just to remind uh, our first line r cube is equal to os r cube is equal to os as we are the learners of organic chemistry we are the learners of organic chemistry means we are the learners of organic synthesis the organic synthesis may be one step two step three step multi-step it may be 10 step 20 steps as i mentioned that the total synthesis of cholesterol is of 58 steps to synthesis 58 steps synthesis and we are studying several natural products in MSc uh, fourth semester cholesterol uh, that is steroids, alkaloids, perchloroids, prostaglandins, tax salts, razor pine, that type of molecules where amoxicillin, ampicillin, penicillin, these types of natural products we are studying uh, and their total synthesis also. This multi-step synthesis may be one step, two step like that way means we are studying organic synthesis. And to understand organic synthesis, what are the requirement? What are the requirement? And here the equation that person has given the equation R cube is equal to OS. And now see one R, one R or first R, first R stands for named reactions. First R stands for named reactions. You should know n number of named reactions. Then only you can understand organic synthesis. Named reactions. And second one. 
named rearrangements. As the students of post graduation, they have to learn more than 50 to 60 named rearrangements as well after before completion of their post graduation program. Means named reactions, named rearrangements, and the third and most important. Third and most uh, most important thing is that related to our reagents. You should have a library of reagents. You should have a library of reagents. And those who knows, those who knows reactions, rearrangements, and reagents, they will only understand organic synthesis. They will only understand organic chemistry, and they are only able to learn organic chemistry or they are able to becoming master in organic chemistry okay rqb is equal to os this beautiful equation i have given to you now uh, now i will discuss over here uh, mastering organic chemistry particularly synthetic organic chemistry synthetic organic chemistry just i want to give highlights of this organic chemistry uh, you should know n number of named reactions you should know n number of named reactions. See, while discussion, I will talk about n number of reactions. Meantime, uh, you should take a note of those named reactions somewhere. You can write in your notebook uh, what are the named reactions are required for preparing for NAID, SAID, and GATE examinations. And why we are preparing for NAID, SAID, and GATE examination, that point I will tell you later on. <clears throat> okay. You should have a library of named reactions as well as the reagent, uh, rearrangements. And I have already mentioned that you should know n number of reagents. Organic chemistry is nothing but dealing with n number of reagents, which can be used for functional group interconvergence. That is also an important thing. Okay. Then, <clears throat> after studying the various kinds of reagents, then you should know different types of reactions that is, substitution, addition, and elimination type of reactions as well as free radicals that is also important substitution substitution not only from textbook but you should read from various kinds of reference books for substitution reactions you should read a reference book like jerry marsh peter sides clayton carry jerry okay mb smith's book such type of books you should read for understanding of Substitution, different types of substitution reaction. See, don't consider that SN1, SN2, and SN9, these three small, small, small reactions, whatever. You have studied for post graduation. You read many more things related to that particular concept. That's why substitution, addition, and elimination reaction, these are the basics of organic chemistry you should know. Okay. Then, stereochemistry, as we are studying stereochemistry, then asymmetric synthesis because uh, now, for net examination, every problem is asked around the uh, chiral center or stereochemistry, what could be the stereochemistry of respective product, like that way. Then, while understanding organic chemistry, you should know, you should know different types of protection and deprotection chemistry. Uh, protection and deprotection chemistry, there is a one unit uh, uh, in your post graduation program or in net examination also protection, protective groups. And uh, this one, you should learn protective groups in organic synthesis. And there is one famous book uh, written by Watson and Green. Watson and Green, protective groups in the organic synthesis. That book is covered all types of protections for all types of functional groups. Uh, all types of functional groups. At least once you read, at least a shorter version of that book, you can read from the carriage part. They, they have given how to do carry out uh, functional group protection and deprotection chemistry. Then, as I have already mentioned, that organic chemistry is nothing but functional group interconversion or functional group transformation, and that transformation can be achieved by some different types of reagents. Some of the reagents may be oxidizing agents, some of the reagents may be reducing agents, some of the dehydrating agents, that type. See, oxidation chemistry. In oxidation, again, you should know metal based and non metal based oxidation. In metal based, again, chromium based, manganese based, rhodium based, osmium based, and rhodium based. Magnets based, etc., etc. I am saying because to learn oxidation reaction, oxidation in organic synthesis may require a year, a year, and you should read specific books on oxidations of alcohols to carbonyl compounds. Oxidation of alcohols to carbonyl compounds, some specific books are also there. And uh, if you are preparing for competitive examination, 
then there is a need to read such type of books okay then reductions different types of reductions are there metal based or non metal based reductions are also there there and just i have given some of the reproductive examples of reduction okay am i audible properly yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir yes. now now, now what uh, the, yes, sir. Uh, now the points which you have considered over here now see uh, why organic chemistry is easy audible sir audible is very audible yeah yeah uh, now organic chemistry is a very much interesting as i asked one question to uh, means one equation i have given oc is equal to dc uh, dc capital dc Uh, as we are the faculty, that's why we used to consider departmental committee. Uh, departmental committee like that. It is not a departmental committee. Organic chemistry is not a departmental committee. Organic chemistry is a discussion chemistry. Discussing chemistry. Organic chemistry is a dancing chemistry. Okay. Organic chemistry is a dancing chemistry because while doing the mechanism of any organic reactions, you have to play a like a dance because. Because we have to give electrons from electron free species to electron deficient species. Again, some breaking of the bonds, formation of new bonds takes place. That's why. That's why organic chemistry is a dancing chemistry. Organic chemistry is a discussion chemistry. Okay, organic chemistry is a discussion chemistry like this. Way. See. Now I have given here four types of questions. Four types of questions. See, and uh, which type of question may you feel difficult? That that we will discuss over here. See over here, benzene is converted into benzene alcohol. What is it going to be the problem? The reaction condition is not provided. Again, this benzene alcohol is converted into some this ether, ether and things. Okay, then this uh, alcohol is converted into methylate, and that methylate is converted into again ether. <laughs> Just you have to write, you have to write. Uh, proper reaction condition and if this question is asked in the university examination complete the following organic transformation or provide the suitable reaction condition for the following transformation okay following transformation don't write in your notebook because i will provide you this presentation uh, just you see in your mobile don't listen don't do only listening uh, things uh, see your mobile See here, reagents are not provided. Just we have to write the reagents. Miss, while carrying out some organic transformation, you should know the n number of reagents, n number of reaction conditions. Okay, then, then second type of question. We have given benzene. We have provided some reaction conditions, formal reagent and some acidic condition is there. What are you doing the reaction condition? While doing, while determining this particular product or intermediate, we should know the reactivity of benzene. See. Just remember my one point. Uh, if you know the structure, then you should know the reactivity of all that compounds. See this benzene. How this benzene will react with formal diet means you should know the reactivity of this formal diet, acid, and benzene. And accordingly, we can find out the product. Again, that intermediate out reaction with sodium hydride and oxygen and uh, H3O positive. If you know the reactivity of whatever product we got over here, accordingly we can treat this one with the epoxide and we will have some other product. Then, then see the product of second step over here. Then, then after getting this intermediate, then reaction with pyridine and methane, methane sulfonic chloride. Again, some reaction condition is there. What is the role of this pyridine? Whether it acts as a base or it acts as acid or it acts as a solvent or in some any other purpose or it acts as a substrate. Accordingly, we have to determine the reactivity of this one. Pyridine, no doubt, it is a base. It will upset the proton and it will react with methane sulfonyl chloride. And accordingly, we will have product. See over here. Again, you should know the reactivity of this particular intermediate uh, and how this intermediate will behave like uh, with sodium ethoxide and how, what kind of nucleophilic substitution reaction takes place. See, to solve such type of problems, you should know electrophilic substitution reaction. Then. Then nucleophilic displacement type of reaction again abstraction of proton and prote protection of this uh, alcoholic group in terms of mesylate and then in the last step nucleophilic substitution reaction means this second type of question uh, you may have answered now third and most difficult question most difficult question under this category see in many times we are asking for university examination how will you convert this A to B 
provide all reaction condition provide all reaction conditions and write all the intermediates with mechanism see this type of question this type of question is too much difficult how benzene can be converted into this particular product then you have to remember all the things and if you have studied properly retrosynthetic analysis then only you can able to draw the multi step synthesis over here see multi step organic transformation and here we have provided starting material here suggest synthesis of this particular product then it becomes too much difficult how to do how to carry out synthesis of this particular molecule such type of questions can uh, such type of questions were asked in our university examination am i right university examination and uh, that's why university examinations are too much difficult than competitive examination because in competitive examination answers are given over there just we have to find out we have to choose correct answer with some logic with some reactivity of the substrate that's why competitive examinations are very much easier than university examination again again see for university examination if the qualifying marks is required 40 marks our question paper is uh, 100 marks question paper and uh, you should have a minimum 40 marks and total uh, question paper is of 100 marks along with some uh, options are there maybe the question paper is of 120 or 25 25 percent weightage is there uh, suppose in a uh, first question you have to solve four question then we are providing total five questions means there is a choice means your total uh, question paper becomes is of 120 marks and amongst 120 marks you have to have a 40 marks only see 40 marks then also students are unable to uh, uh, get 40 marks and the question paper is of 120 marks similarly in competitive examinations see the question paper of net exam net exam how much marks we have to uh, take around 100 110 okay uh, uh, 90 95 as per your category as per your category and as well as whether you have applied for lectureship or whether you are you have applied for jrf according to the merit will be decided okay the most important thing see the question paper if uh, in earlier days in earlier days the c section the c section in the c section there were 75 questions there were 75 questions out of 75 questions you have to attempt only 25 questions nowadays the trend has been changed the number of questions have been reduced from 75 to 65 and and you have to solve 25 questions 25 questions from that c section see 65 into 4 65 into 4 and we have to solve only 25 means there is a lot of choice and each question each question have given some choice of four options multiple choice questions are there that's why that's why see here now i will tell you the equation oc is equal to dc discussion chemistry huh? discussion chemistry dancing chemistry now tc tc uh, it is not a transfer certificate or ticket collector uh, organic chemistry is equal to thinking chemistry the only chemistry thinking chemistry you have to think for each and every step over here see the transformation just i have provided here uh, you have to think yourself what kind of reagents we uh, one can use over here what kind of reaction condition to get what kind of substrate are there that's why organic chemistry is a thinking chemistry okay then then uh, another equation i told you that oc is equal to pc pc is nothing but practice chemistry uh, organic chemistry when you will understand organic chemistry if you have done practice for several times practice for several times then only you will understand organic chemistry very well that's why oc is equal to pc that is the practice chemistry as well as problem solving chemistry problem solving chemistry you don't consider problem is 1 plus 2 is equal to how much not like that way organic chemistry is a bunch of problems basically bunch of problems that's why keep in mind in solving such type of problems now as our task is how to become master in organic chemistry and that 
becoming master in organic chemistry through problem solving approach through problem solving approach now just for today uh, i will give you one one question to you one question to you see simple question if this question is asked in the university examination in university examination see how many constitutional or structural isomers exist for C6H12 that have a cyclopropyl ring in their structure. Simple question is of 12th standard. Okay, read the question carefully. Molecular formula is C6H12. How many structural isomers that have cyclopropyl ring in all, all these structures? If suppose, if suppose in university examination, uh, on first page, if suppose you are given answer 4, you will see what students they are doing like that way. On first page, answer for this question. Suppose this question is 1, F. Yeah. Question number 1 and sub question is F. Yeah. And on first page, if you, if you have written 4 answer, and on the last page of your answer sheet, again, you have solved some questions from first, then again 1, F. Yeah. If you have written uh, answer for that one, on first page, if your answer is wrong, and on the last page, if your answer is correct, then the teacher will think in positive way, yeah, yeah, student have written correct answer on the last page. Then he will make a tick mark. Huh? He will make a tick mark. But, but, but the question, just, I, I can modify the question. Yeah, I can modify the question. How many constitutional isomers that exist for C6H12 that have a cyclopropyl ring in their structure? Uh, this is the first question. Draw all the structures of constitutional isomers. Draw all the expected structures. Then only you will get 100% marks. Then only you will get marks. Otherwise, you will get zero marks. If your answer is wrong, then you will get zero marks. See. In this type of question in the university examination, many students will get zero marks. Many students will get zero marks. Okay, because the question I have modified, how many structures, how many, which number you have to give, and then you have to write structures. If you are written correct number of structures, then only you will get marks. If you are written wrong number of structures, then you will get zero marks. Okay, then see. But in Competitive examination. In competitive examination, if the options are given like this way, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, if A option 3, B option 4, C option 5, and D option 6, what could be the correct answer? 4. Yes. What could be the correct answer? Whether how many isomers are possible? 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes, I can expect answer from student. If some of the teacher participants are there, they can give answer of this question as well. You can uh, unmute yourself and tell me the answer. Hello. Right? Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, sir, I think four isomers. Four isomers. See, uh, if you have given answer is four, and if I am saying your answer is wrong, huh? if I am saying your answer is wrong. Then somebody will tell, sir, answer is 3. Again, I will tell, 3 answer is wrong. Again, if somebody will give answer 5, then again I will say, your answer is wrong. But if someone has given answer 6, then I will tell, your answer is correct. But my next question, can you draw? Can you draw all those 6 isomers? See. That's why just I'm providing all those six isomers. See over here in your laptop, mobile, uh, or computer. All those six isomers here, cyclopropyl ring <coughs> is there. In first isomer, all the three methyl groups on each and every carbons. Here, two methyl groups on the same carbon. One methyl group is here. Here, methyl group. Here, ethyl group. 
here isopropyl group three carbons here n propyl group here ethyl group and methyl group on the same carbon that's why that's why these six structures are possible for molecular formula c6h12 having cyclopropyl ring and so far this simplest question no one is able to give answer of this particular question i have raised this question for more than 70 times even though there were participants from the teacher community those who have qualified net said get examination as well as some of the teachers they may have received a phd degree also they are unable to give answer of this question because because organic chemistry is a thinking chemistry you have to think a lot okay this is the first question just then second question uh, read the question carefully how many alkenes how many alkenes how molecular formula how molecular formula c7h12 could you treat with could you treat with h2pt to prepare methyl cyclohexane to prepare methyl cyclohexane c first of all you should know the structure of final product that is methyl cyclohexane methyl cyclohexane that one should know then the molecular formula is given this starting material is given c7h12 is the molecular formula accordingly accordingly you have to find out what type of alkenes after reduction after reduction after reduction gives methyl cyclohexane c can you have answer for this question how many just yes, how many hello hello am i audible yes sir yes sir sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. what is the answer what is the answer repeat question is sir uh, how many alkenes that gives methyl cyclohexane four four yeah you are given correct answer four sir four yeah four four yeah yeah correct yes. correct Uh, correct. Uh, and if the same question is asked for university examination, write all the four alkenes which could you treat with hydrogen platinum gives methyl cyclohexane. Okay. See, this question is of two marks only. And here, see the uh, alkenes: methylene cyclohexane. See double bond, hexocyclic double bond is there. Then methyl and here double bond. Here at this position after reduction. After reduction of this one, this one, this one, and this one, just reduction by means of H2PT, which gives methyl cyclohexane means reduction of product of this one methyl cyclohexane. Okay, <clears throat> okay, we'll uh, skip this one. Now, uh, uh, with a simple question, uh, simple question, we will talk about this uh, with a simple question. This is the question of 12th standard, but many more students they were failed uh, in giving the answer of this particular question. When phenol is created with chloroform and NaOH, the product formed is which product will form? Which product will form? B. Uh, which product? Which product? Tell me loudly. B sir, salicylaldehyde. Salicylaldehyde, correct. Uh, because see, salicylaldehyde is the product. See, just a small hint I want to give over here. Small hint. No doubt you know very well. Ribbon-ribbon reaction is uh, applicable for phenol. Uh, applicable for phenol, and it gives salicylaldehyde. See, if you know the structure of benzoic acid, in benzoic acid there is no any OH group. 
OH group. Then we can remove this answer benzoic acid. In benzaldehyde, in product we should have OH group. In benzaldehyde there is no uh, OH group. In salicylic acid, see salicylic acid, carboxylic acid group is there, no doubt. It contains chronic OH group, but carboxylic acid is there. And uh, this is chloro, uh, chloroformate DNA OH, which never gives acid. And in salicylic in salicylic it is nothing but orthohydroxy benzaldehyde or uh, 2-hydroxy benzaldehyde is nothing but salicylaldehyde, which is uh, prepared by this of river pivot reaction. Very simple question. Okay, now can you read this question carefully? Can you read? Take some moment and uh, do your Sir, opinion. Uh, screen is not visible. Uh, it's a visible, it's a visible. Just check your internet. Check your internet. No, no sir, sir, screen. No, sir, 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 not visible. Sir. Not visible? Screen is not no, visible, sir. Sir, sir screen is visible. Screen is visible. Presentation. Presentation. Whether it is visible or not? Yes, sir. Uh, visible. visible. No, sir. No, sir. I don't know. The... Can you have the same problem? Yeah. Whether visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, yes, now, uh, now read the question. When phenyl magnesium bromide reacts with tertiary butane or which of the following is formed? Benzene B. Benzene. Which answer is correct answer? C. Uh, just I want to tell you those who have prepared Grignard reagent very well. Very well. Once uh, they will not uh, give wrong answer. Many times the students are giving the answer tertiary butane methyl ether or tertiary butane benzene or phenol because they have not prepared very well. See, any kind of Grignard reagent, I want to tell you, whatever it may be the Grignard reagent, RMGX, on reaction with any kind of alcohol, R OH, that RMGX will abstract the proton from alcohol and formation of corresponding hydrocarbon, RH. Means here, phenyl magnesium bromide, pH, MgBr, pH minus is there. That pH minus will take the proton from tertiary butyrol. Formation of benzene ring. Benzene. That's why, that's why, keep in mind, this particular question was asked in the gate examination for two to three times. The question is very simple, but many students were failed to give answer of this particular question. Okay, that's why, keep in mind, any Grignard reagent down reaction with alcohol or water, formation of corresponding hydrocarbon takes place. Corresponding hydrocarbon takes place. It never gives any kind of ether or any kind of phenol. No doubt, when Grignard reagent out reaction with Grignard reagent out reaction with sodium hydroxide. Okay, see, why not phenol? When Grignard reagent out reaction with sodium hydroxide, then only formation of, uh, sorry, uh, it will not form phenol as well. It will not form phenol. Okay, formation of phenol by different way. Okay, tertiary butyl benzene, see pH minus uh, will treat with the respective alkyl halide. Then only it will form tertiary butyl benzene. Tertiary butyl methyl ether. There is no any kind of uh, phenyl over here. That's why A option is totally wrong, B is also wrong, D is also wrong. That's why B is the correct one. Uh, as I think you may know about uh, this. Uh, yeah, sir, yes. is, uh, yeah. Children, yeah, yeah, it will come, just wait, wait, just, uh, yeah. See, the reaction which involves dichlorocarbene as an electrophile is? Yes. Remote-remote reaction. Yeah, yes. remote-remote reaction. But if suppose, if suppose I have asked a small question just by changing the question, uh, in which reaction, in which reaction, or the reaction which involves acyl carbocation as an electrophile, then what will be the answer? Friedel-Craft reaction. Friedel -Craft reaction. Friedel -Craft reaction. Yeah, Friedel-Craft reaction means we can change the question like this way. 
a small small question now as being the learner of post graduation you should have a an answer of this particular question see the most suitable reagent for the conversion is primary alcohol to aldehyde read the question carefully yeah yeah pcc why not pcc why not potassium carbonate sir yeah. pcc is a wild oxidizing agent and where kno4 and a strong oxidizing agent strong. Yeah. yeah remaining are a strong oxidizing agent pcc is a mild oxidizing agent it oxidizes primary alcohol to aldehyde only remaining reagents oxidizes primary alcohol to carboxylic acid as well because because the reason see the reason to use potassium dichromate or potassium permanganate requires requires water to carry out oxidation and over oxidation takes place leading towards the carboxylic acid that is the reason that is the reason okay then okay skip this one yeah again small question small question which of the following is used in the manufacture of bakelite because this question was asked in option d and option d option d correct yeah? because because uh, this is the question of twelfth standard definitely phenol is treated with formula acid catalyzed acid catalyzed reaction is there that's why it requires formaldehyde and phenol okay oh. correct now now this question i can ask to university examination how will you distinguish how will you distinguish two pentanone and three pentanone to each other distinction between 2 pentanone and 3 pentanone how will you distinguish by which reagent see this question is asked in the university examination consider which of the reagent is used for distinguishing 2 pentanone and 3 pentanone chemically yes you have given answers of simple simple questions now this question is a difficult this question is a difficult because i have not provided any kinds of answers over there that's why university examination is difficult than this is say it net and get examination hello form reaction yeah correct hello form reaction see first of all you need to have a structures of these two 2 pentanone and 3 pentanone you need the structures of 2 pentanone and 3 pentanone okay just i will change the question i will change the question which spectroscopic technique can be used can be used for the uh, distinguishing distinguishing these two compounds which spectroscopic two nm mass mass Okay, okay. Uh, whether IR is suitable? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yes, I, sir. IR is not suitable because IR never determines the position of carbonyl group. But H1 NMR, H1 NMR, H1 NMR, as well as carbon 13 NMR can be used for distinguishing this. Two ketones, two pentanone and three pentanone, as well as someone has told that mass spectrometry is also used for distinguishing the position of carbonyl groups in this. Now, just we will discuss. Uh, someone has told ido form test, but why ido form? Why not others? Just we can uh, have a discussion on on the reagent. See, zinc is GSCl. If you have a structure of two pentanone and three pentanone. Uh, this Clemens and reduction condition, which Clemens. used N pentane, N pentane reduction of carbonyl groups takes place. That's why this reagent cannot be used for distinguishing two pentane and three pentane. If you take selenium dioxide, as we know the application, see if I am giving selenium dioxide in front of you, you should know all the applications of selenium dioxide. Where this selenium dioxide is used for the oxidation of allylic system to allylic alcohols, for the oxidation of uh, ketones to one to di ketones. For dehydrogenation purpose, means from ketone to alpha beta and saturated ketone, this selenium dioxide can be used. It's like that way. See, two pentanone and three pentanone both gets oxidized, and you will have a diketo system will be there. Diketo system will be there, and it will difficult to determine 
the difference between these two ketones. Then potassium dichromate and sulfuric acid under acidic condition, both ketones will get oxidized and may form similar type of ketones. That's why these three reaction conditions are not suitable for distinguishing two pentanone and three pentanone. And last one, iodine and NaOH. See, iodine and NaOH in two pentanone and three pentanone, two pentanone, in case alpha hydrogen can be abstracted by use of NaOH and formation of Ci3 over here, Ci3CO. But in case of three pentanone, it is a symmetrical one. Abstraction of proton takes place and iodination over here. And then, then nucleophilic attack of NaOH for two pentanone case, we will get iodoform directly as well as carboxylic acid. But in three pentanone, we will not get that iodoform and carboxylic acid in case of three pentanone. That's why that's why iodine and NaOH is used for distinguishing two pentanone and three pentanone. Okay. Can you read this question? Can you read carefully? And can you have an answer? Reaction. Uh, what is your name? What is your name? Can you have your name, please? Name, name, please. Your name. Who has given answer? Adesh Karate. Okay, okay. See, it means that it means that you have not read the question carefully. You have not read the question carefully. See, in which of the following reactions new carbon-carbon bond is not formed? Friend, in friedel craft reaction, it may be alkylation or acylation. Reaction of benzene or any aromatic substrate on reaction with carbocation or acyl carbocation, hmm? electrophile, there will be formation of alkyl benzenes or acyl benzene in case of friedel craft reaction. In second case, alloy condensation. In alloy condensation, you can take two equivalents of aldehyde, same aldehyde or different aldehydes, mixed up alloy type of condensation. There is a formation of beta hydroxy carbonyl compounds. Carbon carbon bond formation reaction takes place. Then Wood's reaction. Wood's reaction, reaction of two equivalents of alkyl aldehyde in presence of sodium metal, we will have a higher hydrocarbon. Higher hydrocarbon, and in that case also, carbon carbon bond formation reaction takes place. But in Kanizoro's reaction, see the question, new carbon-carbon bond is not formed. New carbon-carbon bond is not formed in case of Kanizoro's. See, two equivalents of formaldehyde or two equivalents of benzaldehyde. One benzaldehyde gets converted into sodium salt of benzoic acid and another benzaldehyde gets reduced into benzyl alcohol. See, means only functional group transformation takes place over there. One functional group gets oxidized and another molecule gets reduced. That's why there is no carbon-carbon bond formation takes place over here. See, this is the beautiful question. In which reaction there is no carbon-carbon bond is formed? Okay. Yeah, we will not discuss regarding this IUPAC. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think... Uh, uh, we have five o'clock, and I think this is the last question for today's discussion. Uh, can you read this question? The appropriate reason for the transformation. First of all, look towards the transformation. What kind of modification takes place in the starting material as well as the product over here? See, hydroxyl group as it is in the product, only conversion of carbonyl group to hydrocarbon takes place over here. And we have studied some reactions, some reactions related to conversion of carbonyls to hydrocarbon. This reduction of carbonyls to hydrocarbon, that is not a partial reduction, complete reduction. Okay, and we know Clemenson reduction reaction. But under this Clemenson reduction condition, GSCL, no doubt reduction of carbonyl to hydrocarbon takes place along with the secondary OH group. Under acidic condition, dehydration may take place. That's why you need a selective reagent, selectively reduction of this carbon is to hydrocarbon. This A answer is a wrong one. Then now we will discuss D option. In D option, sodium borohydride is there. Sodium borohydride only reduces ketone to alcohol. 
it never reduces alcohol to hydrocarbon sodium borohydride then hydrogen nickel reduction of carbon is to hydroxyl group takes place means these three options we can remove easily and the last option b option that is hydrazine hydrate that is the reaction condition for wolf kishner reduction which reduces carbon into hydrocarbon and this hydroxyl group will remain intact under basic condition in the form of sodium salt and after quenching the reaction we will get this hydroxyl product over here with this i think uh, uh, we will stop for today's discussion because so many things are here it's a uh, five o'clock as per the schedule of our lecture as uh, we have started at 3 pm and just we are ending at uh, exactly at 5 pm uh, the students may have so many queries uh, about the discussion and uh, we'll discuss those queries either today or tomorrow it depends upon you okay thank you so much sir yes, sir. Thank, thank you sir thank you sir this session was very informative sir and we are very sorry for the technical issues no 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 it's not a technical issue some minor issue was there some minor issues it was not a uh, lengthy issue or time consuming issue some minor issue of uh, displaying the presentation as well